Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to look at fixing problems with symmetrical shapes and compound paths in Illustrator. Now before we get started, one thing I want to make clear and that is that with the shape that we're looking at in this video, it would probably be simpler to go back and draw it again from scratch. But the solution we're going to look at is one that's going to show us techniques and tools and concepts that we can use to understand how Illustrator works and to understand how we might be able to fix things that were more complex, for example, in future. So take this video as a learning exercise, not because I think this is the most efficient way of solving the problem, but because I think it's an interesting way of solving the problem. I know a lot of people follow me here on YouTube because I do just this sort of thing. So let's have a look at it. Now I have a shape here that was sent to me by somebody and the question was, how would they fix the problems in the shape? It's not as smooth as they would like it to be. What they've done is they've drawn it in two pieces and then joined it together and the result was that we've got some untidy edges here. We've also got a few problems at either end of this shape as well. And so how do we fix this problem? Well, the first thing to do is to have a look and see what you've actually got. And so when I select over this shape as it was sent to me, I can see that it's a compound path. So that means that there's an outside line and an inside line and between those two lines it's filled with black. Now if you're not 100% sure what a compound path is, let's take a look at that first because it's really critical to what's going on here. I'm drawing a circle, I'm going to draw a second circle and let me just colour the second circle so that we can see things a little bit more easily. So this is just a filled shape, an ellipse, and this is a filled shape, it's another ellipse. If I place the orange one on top of the black one, and if I want to knock a hole in the black one the size of the orange one, I can select over both of these shapes and go to the Pathfinder palette and click minus front. And when I do, have a look and see what's happening here. Instead of those two shapes, we get what's called a compound path. And when we zoom in and have a really good look at this compound path, you'll see that it's got anchor points on the inside marking out the inside shape and on the outside marking out the outside shape. That's a really obvious and very typical compound path. The exact same thing's happening over here. We've got an outside shape and an inside shape and both the inside shape and the outside shape have got anchor points on them. That's what's creating this filled shape which is just the bit around the edge. So once you understand what a compound path looks like and how it's being created and the fact that it's two sets of lines marking out the outside and inside of this shape, let's have a look and see what happens when we release a compound path because that's the secret to what we need to do here. I'm going to select over my compound path and I can choose object, compound, path, release and that undoes the compound path and what I end up with here is the outer shape and the inner shape. And so if I was to release this compound path, we would expect to release it to an outer shape and an inner shape. Both of them are going to be filled with black. Let's have a look. I'll select over my compound path, object, compound path, release. And I end up with two shapes, an outer shape and an inner shape. Now I only need one of them, so let's just go and see which one is the better of the two. This has got a slight dent in it. This one's, oh, it's got a big dent in it. So let's go and get rid of the one with the big dent in it. And we'll just go back to the single shape here. Now we need to have a look at this point because this is still an issue. So let's just go in to this area and see if we can work out what's going on. There's an anchor point here and an anchor point here that are controlling this dent. Now if we want to smooth it out, it might be better just to select over the entire shape with the selection tool and then go to the smooth tool which shares a toolbar position here with the shaper tool. What I'm going to do is just move over here to try and get rid of this dent. So I'm just dragging over this to try and get rid of the dent. The other thing that you could do is you could try and remove those extra anchor points but Got to make sure that you really do get rid of them all. So I'm pretty done there and let's just go here and do the same thing. Because that dent, if it continues to be two anchor points there, is just going to cause me problems later on. So let me just zoom back out. 
So now I have no dents here. I do have a slight problem top and bottom here. So let's just zoom in and see if we can solve this as well. Select over this with the anchor point tool. This one I think is going to be easy enough to fix using the delete anchor point tool. So I'm just going to click on and delete any anchor points I no longer need. So there's one in the middle I'm going to keep and I'm going to delete the ones on the outside. That's looking pretty good there. Let's go and zoom out and see what we can find at the bottom here. Then we have a bit more cleaning up to do here. I've got one in the middle here and I've got some extras here. So let's go back to the delete anchor point tool and just delete the anchor points we don't need anymore. Okay, and I've got a single point at the bottom here. So let me just zoom back out. I'm using Control or Command Zero to zoom back out. I don't need these circles anymore, so I'm just going to delete them to get rid of them. Now, you'll recall that I used the Smooth tool to smooth out the edge of this and to smooth out this edge. At the moment, this shape is no longer symmetrical because the smoothing on either side will not have been applied evenly. So I won't get the exact same smoothing here as I've got over here. Now, if I don't want a symmetrical shape, I'm pretty much done. But if I do want a symmetrical shape, this is how we're going to turn this into perfect symmetry. I'm going to select over it and I'm going to flip it and copy it. So let's do this. Object, Transform, Reflect. I'm going to reflect it over the vertical and I'm going to make a copy. I'm also just going to recolor this one so you can see what's happening. What I've done is I've created an orange copy over the top of a black copy. And if we zoom into these edges here, you'll see that you can see little bits of the black copy underneath. And the reason for this is that the two shapes, although they were pretty accurate, are not identical. So we've effectively added both shapes to each other. And if we make these into a single shape, then we'll have a symmetrical shape. So I'm going to select over both of these. They're just a y-axis reflection of each other. I'm going to the Pathfinder palette and I'm going to click Unite. And that turns them from two shapes into one shape. And that shape is perfectly symmetrical. Now you'll recall that when we started, we had a shape that was just a black line and not a filled shape. If you want this to be just the line, then you'll just select it and flip the stroke and the fill. And then we can just increase the stroke weight to get the final result. Now at any point, if you still think this needs some smoothing work, you can select it, choose Object Path, and then Simplify. And we'll just reduce the number of points here. So I'm going to ask to keep up my angle threshold and my curve precision, but I don't want all the jagged edges around here. Now we can click here to show original and just see if that looks very different. And I'm not seeing a huge amount of difference, but we are down from 208 points to 23 points. So I'm just going to click OK. Now we can do the exact same thing here. Object, Transform, Reflect. Reflect it over the vertical, make a copy, select both of our shapes and just join them using the Pathfinder Unite command. And that will give us a slightly smoother, yet still fully symmetrical version of our original shape. So there are some ideas for working with compound paths and with symmetry. Now I know that this has been a very simple example, but it's going to work very similarly in a complex example. And it's one way to get a single filled shape or a stroke shape out of a compound path. So I hope this video has been of help to you. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.